Farming regenerative, is that the truest form of, of terroir in your opinion? Terroir is like the expression of the property. Yes. Right? So, yes. so the more the more a human tries to control that property, the less terroir that wine is gonna exhibit, right? Because we are trying to influence every little step of the way. Okay. What we try and do here is step back a little bit and and really let nature do its thing yeah working with nature as opposed to against okay. it i think regenerative farming is the only way to get a true expression of what that property is providing We're here in the wintertime and I see white buckets and I had to look at it and I'm like, what the hell are they painting after they're pruning? And so, it, and it is, it's a process, uh, you know, that usually conventional style methods would be pesticides, right? Yeah, yeah, so um, we're protecting our pruning wounds from a disease called Utypa, it's a trunk disease. Yeah. And uh, during wet weather events, the spore bodies will explode and send their spores out through the atmosphere and land on any open pruning wound. Mm -hmm. So we use a product called Vitaseal. It's organically approved uh, by Omri. And it's basically a clay mixture that just is painted onto these wounds and it hardens and seals those wounds to prevent any sort of spore body from entering the vine. So we're pruning mm -hmm. right now, but we're also thinking about the soil mm -hmm. and thinking about what sort of groundwork we can lay out there. Uh, we're incorporating animals into the system at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, we planted our cover crop back in November. Mm -hmm. So that's all starting to seed. Uh, and as soon as we get some good growth out of the cover crops uh, and native vegetation, we'll turn the sheep loose and yeah. they'll start fertilizing. <laughs> so what is your role with, with Tablas Crew, yeah. Nathan? So, um, so I'm the in-house shepherd, yeah. which is a, a, a pretty amazing position. There's not very many wineries that have a full-time shepherd, yeah. obviously. I always say sheep is just another tool in the vineyard. It's not a, uh, it's not the answer. Yeah. Um, and people a lot of times think, you know, they're, whatever they are into is like the answer when it comes to sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the fact is there's a million tools and a million practices that are really beneficial to the planet. Mm -hmm. And sheep can be one and they can also be your worst enemy. So we, uh, we use the sheep because it cuts down our tractor passes in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. So they're in the vineyard during the winter. We have them out right now, as you can see, because we just had a storm. Mm -hmm. But they'll be moving into this block in about two weeks. We'll have grass growing in there. And they'll keep the weeds down all winter long. And then come springtime, when the tractors can get in, mm -hmm. um, now that you know, the, the soil's hardened up enough for the tractors to get in there, uh, they'll have a lot less work to do. Yeah. So that means less fuel burn, less tractor time, which is one of our more expensive labors. Mm -hmm. Um, so it brings our cost down and then they're dropping 400 pounds of manure every day, that herd. So that's not just 400 pounds of manure, that's 400 pounds of manure spread evenly throughout the vineyard that you didn't truck in, you didn't distribute, you didn't have to spread it. It's just evenly out there, yeah. which is awesome. And um, it all came from nutrients that they took right off of our property too. So it's just a recycling of nutrients on the property in a really cool way. That is all everywhere you see. Yeah. Manure. Manure. Right? So that's our fertilizer right there. And, and, and like in a conventional world, in a conventional world, you, you fertilize right here. Yeah. Right on this emitter 
fertilize right here. Yep. Fertilize right here, or you're spraying the canopy, right? right? Nobody, you're not fertilizing out here. You can't do that. You can't afford that. Yeah. And and with running animals in a vineyard, you're literally putting fertilizer in every square inch of ground, yeah. as far as you can see. Mm -hmm. You know, you're hard pressed to go anywhere on this property, look down, and not see a piece of manure. So me as a wine consumer, right, and I start hearing all these buzzwords about organic, biodynamic, sustainability, and now throw in regenerative. Yeah. Uh, I feel like regenerative is like kind of taking all of those things, you know, and looking at the best practices out of all of them. What's, what's your take on that? Um, organics and biodynamics, um, they're, you know, they're the way people used to farm thousands of years ago. They just kind of were given a term. Uh, we're not reinventing the wheel by any means. The regenerative farming is like the culmination of those two styles of farming. And we actually, we didn't necessarily change a whole ton of our farming styles when we decided to move into this regenerative movement, there's more of a focus in mind when it came to soil health and carbon sequestration when we decided to take that step into the regenerative world. Mm -hmm. You're farming the soil and then and then healthy crops are a byproduct of that healthy soil. And it also takes the human aspect into account, you know, you need to have a healthy labor force a happy, healthy labor force to make all that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which in my mind is the most beautiful part of regenerative farming uh, is not losing sight of that human aspect. The certifications that are coming out, ROC for one, uh, that are focused more on regenerative, it's, it's basically taking those styles of farming to the next level. We all have the same end goal, you know? We're all trying to farm as responsibly as possible and to, you know, leave the land better than when we found it. It's just self-improvement. We as a species can always be better, yeah. you know? And that can correlate right into our farming tactics. Regenerative is just the evolution of, you know, responsible farming. Joanne, we, we, we showed up, here it is, you know, mid-February. I was expecting to see sheep through the vineyard yeah. and, uh, you know, I didn't. I actually spent time with you this morning actually setting up this fence here. So tell me, you know, what's going on and what, what, are, what are these decisions that you're making with the sheep here? Yeah, our cover crop is very short right now mm -hmm. and we don't want to let them in the vineyard mm -hmm. because they just, the, the cover crop won't, won't have a chance. We want it to get established. We want it to bloom and mm -hmm. flower and and drop some seeds so it regenerates year after year. Mm -hmm. So they'll be happy here for about two weeks, which is longer than normal, than we would normally keep them in a pasture, but this is a bigger pasture. Just waiting for the cover crop to come up a little more in the vineyard before we let them in. But they're super happy. So 
eat all this brown stuff. They're not too picky. This is land that we used to have um, a, a neighbor guy come in and disc mm -hmm. the perimeter mm -hmm. for fire suppression. And this year, because we're working on our regenerative organic certificate and we're trying to just eliminate all tilling and disking. Mm -hmm. So um, we let the sheep graze the perimeter this year. And it was really great for us because we didn't have to buy food. It's really hard to find organic hay mm -hmm. in our community. So yeah. <laughs> we've saved a lot of money. And then additionally, we've just enhance the soil around our property. Yeah. I enjoy this, it's one of my favorite things. I would much rather be moving sheep than be sitting at my desk, staring at my computer. The sheep now uh, have been a pasture down here. Mm -hmm. we, we did the fencing, we moved them on the side of the hill. Uh, you know, because you're waiting for the cover. Now, at this time of year, do you expect it to be taller? And if so, yes. why isn't it as tall? So, uh, typically we throw our seeds down, our cover crop seeds right um, after harvest. Mm -hmm. And then in an, a typical, typical year, whatever that is now, yeah. we would get rainfall in November. And um, the cover, we'd have enough rain by now that the cover crop would be, you know, a foot or so high. It would be high enough to put the sheep in the vineyard. Gotcha. Um, so we're a little delayed this year, and but it, that's farming. You just kind of have to roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. So the cover crop just is emerging, and, and we're crossing our fingers that we get more rain. We're environmentalists first, okay. and we feel that this way of farming is makes the best wine. Those are kind of like neck and neck yeah. <laughs> tied. I mean, our goal is to make the best wine off of this property that we can. Yeah. We want to set an example and be a leader. And yeah. and we're right now learning. So we're still learning. Mm -hmm. We'll always be learning, yes. but um, just excited about this process because also what these certifications do is they teach you a lot mm -hmm. as a yeah. farmer on how you can do things better. Moving into spring, because we still have a month and a half. What's best yeah. case scenario and worst case scenario <laughs> for you? Uh, well, so best case scenario is we get a little bit of rain frequently. Okay. And our co you know, we can move the sheep into the vineyard. I, I don't think we're gonna get them all the way through. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to pick our blocks. And usually if we have a block that seems to be struggling or mm -hmm. just needs more sheep love, <laughs> yeah. we'll start there and then move them quickly like every week. Okay, and then worst case scenario, you don't get the frequent rains. Okay, we're really lucky because we have great soil and it holds a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we have more warm days like this, this grass is going to shoot up and our cover crop, I mean, you can see it's established. So I'm not worried um, about it not, not growing. So really because of your practices, I mean, yeah. that you're following regenerative, I mean, you, you know, I'm, worst case scenarios are not no. typically worst case scenarios with, you know, you would say conventional farming or right. something of that nature. Yeah, we, yeah. we um, I think we're adaptable also. You know, you know, you know, we know that we have to work with Mother Nature mm -hmm. and we've done it year after year. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, perfect. We do what we have to do yeah. and it works and it's all good. And, you know, if the sheep don't get in the vineyard, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> That's a great the point. vines will be fine. There's enough nutrition in the soil yeah. um, because of all of our practices that we've been doing. Yeah. Um, well, I'm excited to come back in, yeah. in spring and, and see this cover crop and seeing the sheep go to work. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. It's a whole different picture yeah. in the spring. Yeah. And it's really beautiful. Perfect. It's so pretty. In my mind, I'm thinking to myself, like, are they fucking with? Are they fucking with me right now? <laughs> Before you change anything on the farm, you need to change the way you look at a vineyard. So we're doing one of the one of the infield soil tests. Stop looking at them as weeds. Look at them as a beneficial habitat. That's the first few inches, and look at all that. Just keeping that topsoil together. I mean, it's a battlefield right beneath our feet right now. <laughs> it's, 